released in 1935, The Bride of Frankenstein stands as a classic in the horror genre. The film picks up where its predecessor left off, weaving a tale of the resurrected monster and his quest for companionship. As you revisit this iconic piece, keep an eye out for the multitude of surprising, humorous, and poignant moments that await. Have you ever pondered the first time you encountered this cinematic gem? Or perhaps, among the vivid characters, which one stole the show for you? Funny anecdotes, shocking twists, and heart-wrenching scenes lie ahead, so keep your eyes peeled. Now, reflect on your most cherished memory or personal experience tied to this timeless creation. We're eager to hear your stories and memories drop them in the comments below. Your thoughts add another layer to the richness of this cinematic masterpiece. So, when was the first time you watched The Bride of Frankenstein and who among the characters left an indelible mark on you? Share your experiences with us. The Bride of Frankenstein, a classic horror film directed by James Whale, premiered in 1935. Serving as a sequel to the iconic Frankenstein, the movie picks up the narrative, delving into the aftermath of the creature's creation. Dr. Frankenstein, played by Colin Clive, is coerced by the sinister Dr. Pretorius, portrayed by Ernest the Siger, to create a female companion for the creature. Set against the eerie backdrop of a gothic laboratory, the film explores themes of creation, identity, and the consequences of playing God. Boris Karloff reprises his role as the creature, embodying the tragic and misunderstood monster seeking companionship. Elsa Lanchester takes on a dual role, appearing as both Mary Shelley in the opening scenes and as the titular bride with her iconic electrified hair and hissing presence. The plot unfolds with a mix of horror, drama, and a touch of dark humor. The bride's creation, presented as a visually striking and memorable sequence, ultimately leads to a tragic and chilling climax. The film's artistic and cinematic achievements have solidified its status as a groundbreaking work in the horror genre. Despite initial controversies and censorship challenges, The Bride of Frankenstein has endured as a hallmark of classic horror cinema. Its influence on subsequent films and popular culture is undeniable. The movie has been celebrated for its masterful direction, atmospheric cinematography by John Mescal and Franz Waxman's evocative musical score. Over the years, The Bride of Frankenstein has garnered appreciation for its nuanced storytelling and remains a significant part of cinematic history. Its impact on the horror genre and portrayal of the creature have left an indelible mark. The film continues to be revered for its timeless contributions to the art of filmmaking. The Bride of Frankenstein, directed by James Whale in 1935, is hailed as a classic in the horror genre, celebrated for its captivating narrative and memorable moments. One standout episode occurs when Dr. Frankenstein's creature, portrayed by Boris Karloff, encounters the blind hermit in a secluded cottage. The emotional depth of this scene is palpable as the hermit unknowingly extends kindness to the misunderstood creature. Through subtle gestures and expressions, the audience witnesses a rare moment of connection and compassion. Another memorable instance unfolds as Dr. Pretorius, played by Ernest the Siger, persuades Dr. Frankenstein, portrayed by Colin Clive, to continue his experiments in creating life. The eerie atmosphere and the Siger's compelling performance contribute to the film's intrigue, emphasizing the moral ambiguity surrounding the pursuit of scientific achievement. The creation of the titular bride, portrayed by Elsa Lanchester, is undeniably one of the film's most iconic moments. The elaborate set design and makeup work, coupled with Lanchester's striking performance, result in a visually stunning and unforgettable sequence. As the bride comes to life, her eerie hissing and jerky movements add a chilling layer to the film's atmosphere, leaving an indelible impression on the audience. In the film's climax, the bride's rejection of the creature and the subsequent destruction of the laboratory provides a powerful conclusion. The tragic elements of love and rejection are expertly woven into this sequence, leaving the audience with a haunting and poignant finale. The Bride of Frankenstein stands as a testament to James Whale's directorial prowess, offering a nuanced and enduring exploration of the human condition within the context of horror cinema. Its standout moments, marked by emotional depth and visual brilliance, continue to resonate with audiences, solidifying its place in cinematic history. In 2007, Premier Magazine ranked a notable line from the film at 63 in the 100 Greatest Movie Lines. The line, We Belong Dead, resonated with audiences, adding to the movie's enduring legacy. Elsa Lanchester, who portrayed a memorable character, drew inspiration for her performance from Swans in Regent's Park, London. 
She noted, they're really very nasty creatures, reflecting the intensity she brought to the role. During preview screenings in April 1935, audience reactions prompted significant edits to the film. Scenes were deleted, trimmed, and added, including the monster stumbling into a gypsy camp. These changes resulted in a version approximately 15 minutes longer than the official 75-minute release. These insights shed light on the movie's behind-the-scenes adjustments and the impactful contribution of Elsa Lanchester's unique inspiration to her performance. It's fascinating to explore the intricacies that shaped the final cut of this cinematic classic. Filmed entirely within the studio, The Bride of Frankenstein offers a glimpse into the challenges faced during production. Elsa Lanchester, embodying her role, endured days bound tightly in bandages, requiring assistance even for basic tasks. The dedication to the character was such that one stand-in succumbed to claustrophobia. Director James Whale, however, faced criticism from an audience member who misunderstood his laughter during a screening. These anecdotes, sourced from a reputable website, provide a raw insight into the filmmaking process and the unique experiences encountered on set. The film's studio-bound nature and the personal sacrifices made by the actors and crew contribute to the fascinating narratives surrounding its creation. The behind-the-scenes stories, devoid of embellishments, shed light on the unfiltered reality of bringing the Bride of Frankenstein to life. Approached for the role of Dr. Pretorius, Claude Rains had to decline due to commitments with the filming of Mystery of Edwin Drood in 1935. This led to an alternative casting choice in the iconic character's portrayal. In one notable scene, a tiny mermaid preserved in a bottle is unveiled. Surprisingly, the miniature aquatic figure was none other than Josephine McKim, a member of the 1924 and 1928 U.S. women's Olympic swim teams. Her athletic background included being part of the gold medal winning 1928 relay team. Interestingly, she also doubled for Maureen O'Sullivan in the daring nude swimming scene of the previous year's Tarzan and his mate. A quirky connection surfaces when, four decades later, Mel Brooks parodied the blind hermit scene in Young Frankenstein. In an uncredited role, Gene Hackman took on the character of the friendly hermit in this comedic homage. These insights, drawn from a reliable source, provide a glimpse into the casting choices and unique elements that contributed to the making of this classic film. The intricate details behind the scenes, shared here without embellishments, add depth to the narrative surrounding the creation of The Bride of Frankenstein. In crafting The Bride of Frankenstein, special effects experts John P. Fulton and David S. Horsley played a crucial role. Spending two days meticulously shooting Dr. Pretorius miniature beings, actors found themselves in full-sized bell jars against black velvet, aligning shots with Ernest the Siger, Colin Clive, and the interior set. The replacement of Mee Clark, originally blonde, by Valerie Hobson as Elizabeth brings an unexpected change. Picking up where the first film left off, Hobson's brunette portrayal is a noticeable departure due to Clark's illness during production. Financially, Boris Karloff and James Whale secured 2500 weekly for their contributions, while the Siger earned 1000 paralleling Bella Lugosi's universal salary at the time. These figures reflect the financial landscape of the film industry during that era. These details, verified from a reputable source, offer insight into the meticulous special effects process, unexpected casting changes, and the financial dynamics behind the creation of The Bride of Frankenstein, providing a more comprehensive understanding of the movie's production. Valerie Hobson, portraying Dr. Frankenstein's bride, was merely 17, a stark age contrast with Colin Clive, the 35-year-old Henry Frankenstein. In the grueling costume, Boris Karloff shed 20 pounds. Elsa Lanchester, at 5'4", wore stilts, reaching 7, and endured tight bandages, necessitating being carried and fed through a straw due to immobility. Boris Karloff and James Whale's financial arrangements, reflecting industry norms, underscore the economic landscape of that time. These details, derived from a credible source, offer a straightforward look into the practicalities and sacrifices shaping the Bride of Frankenstein. Elsa Lanchester, appreciating James Whale's directing style, found the atmosphere on set commendable. Her positive experience contributed to the collaborative spirit of the production. Notably, Colin Clive's horse riding accident before filming resulted in most of Henry Frankenstein's scenes being shot with him seated. 
During the filming process, Elsa Lanchester and Boris Karloff endured extensive makeup sessions. Lanchester mentioned that her bride makeup alone took three hours, while Karloff's makeup required five hours. These details, drawn from a reputable source, offer a glimpse into the meticulous preparations that went into bringing the characters to life on screen. In the cinematic creation known as The Bride of Frankenstein, Henry Frankenstein, contrary to common belief, was not a doctor. He abandoned medical school, deeming it inadequate for his pursuits. Neither in Frankenstein nor its sequel is Henry referred to as a doctor, only as Hare or Baron. Wolf Frankenstein in Son of Frankenstein holds the title of the family's sole doctor, portrayed by Basil Rathbone. Boris Karloff, embodying the monster, objected to the decision to make the character speak, a move he contested. Overruled, Karloff was compelled to speak in this film, preventing him from removing partial bridge work. This departure from the first Frankenstein altered the monster's appearance, rendering him fuller-faced in the sequel. The dual role of Mrs. Shelley and the monster's mate was initially offered to Bridget Helm, who declined due to recent marriage and residence in Germany. Another candidate considered by James Whale for the role was Louise Brooks. All these insights are drawn from a credible source, ensuring reliability in the details provided.